So we discussed the decision tree and we talked in general about how uh, learning decision tree proceeds. Now we're going to get a little bit more into the details and talk about how to choose the next splitting uh, rule. So what you're given is a current tree, and then you want to check for each leaf and each feature, uh, find all the possible splitting rules, and then compute the reduction in entropy. Okay? So that's basically the, the overall way that this works. And this seems very exhaustive. Basically, there is a lot of, uh, basically, we're enumerating over all possibilities. But because we're just looking at rules that split on a single feature, um, it is actually not, not that computationally intensive. So what we're looking for is a leaf and a feature and a split rule that minimizes the entropy. And then we add this selected rule to, the se to uh, split the selected leaf. And we have a new tree, and we go to the next step. OK, so how do we enumerate splitting rules? It depends on what the features are like. If the features uh, have a fixed small number of values, then you can either split on all of these values, like the location is beach or prison or ski slope, or we can split on equality or inequality. OK? If the feature is continuous, like temperature, then we have essentially two options. One is to take all of the records that we have, all of the data, and sort it by the feature, and then search for the best split along this line. Or we can split on percentiles. So in, when the data is very big, we usually would split on percentiles. Why are, is that? Because suppose that we have um, an RDD in Spark with 100 million examples. Okay. So if you want to sort this RDD according to each feature, that is actually a very expensive operation. It's a, it's a shuffle. Instead, what you can do is you can use a sample. And um, using that sample, um, you can find the percentiles. Okay, so each sample is, let's say, about 10,000 examples. And then you take just that sample and you sort it um, uh, by order. And then you pick the locations at, at location 100, the value at location 200, at location 300, and so on. And those would give you uh, percentile uh, approximations that you can use to split the rest of the data. And because uh, sampling works well in this case, uh, we, can, we can really rely on these samples to give us uh, good, good splitting boundaries. And then these boundaries you broadcast to all of the partitions. So now all of the partitions know how to split the data. Each partition is then uh, computes the contribution of um, the data that it has to the error of a rule that is um, uh, that predicts only between one um, threshold and the next threshold. And then we combine all of this data, and we have um, a criteria that gives us the best rule overall. OK, so to summarize this part, the splitting criteria is a strictly concave function that bounds the training error. The search for splitting rule tests all possible splits in the current tree. And when the feature is continuous and the data large, we split on percentiles that we get using sampling instead of splitting on all examples after sorting all examples. Next time, we're going, to perform, we're going to talk about the performance of this tree on a test set. Okay, so, so far, we only talked about how the tree performs on the training set. And on the test set, we might get uh, overfitting. So we're going to talk about this in the next video. See you then.